Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Very difficult broadcast I want to share with you today. The situation in Ukraine. Uh, why is Ukraine being taken down? It is strategic. It is it is for a global agenda, a new world order, and it has far more reaching implications than you could ever imagine. Oddly enough, what, we're, what you're going to find out today, and I know this may sound conspiratorial to get into this, but taking down Ukraine, causing this war, provoking Russia into a war, has a lot to do with even Planet X, believe it or not. It has to do with the Sphinx of Egypt. It has to do with getting the economy collapsed in Egypt uh, so that the United States, Israel, etc., can overtake that nation. We're going to go all the way back to when Obama was in power. The Arab Spring, the Arab Spring was actually supposed to bring this, uh, bring Egypt down to where they could get control of the country because of Planet X coming. Now, those of you that follow us over on Patreon, Israeli News Live on Patreon, there, I have shared inside information about the Sphinx what's in the Sphinx, things like that, why that's so critical. But today we're going to go into it in the news because it is imperative. Uh, going to be getting into a lot of issues here. The economy collapse as a result of Egypt, all because of Ukraine. I can, I've been putting pieces together from intel that I've been given now over, over several months. And now it's all coming together. This video right here on your screen, Putin foiled NATO plan to take Donetsk and Luhansk. I think on YouTube it was titled initially uh, Putin foiled NATO plan to, to take Donbass. Uh, that was our 30 second clip. It's still here on iConnect. It's on IsraeliNewsLive.org. Um, and by the way, speaking of IsraeliNewsLive.org, yeah, you can always see those type videos that, that anything that comes up on iConnect, uh, iConnect will show up here. And uh, uh, so let's get right back into this. So we're going to be going into that. We're going to be going into Israel's involvement, how Israel wants Ukraine for them for themselves. It's basically going to be Israel part two, our second homeland for Israel. They need to control that area for their own food supply in the future. Not to mention every leader, with the exception of Netanyahu and maybe Naftali Bennett, that has been prime ministers of Israel are all Ukrainian descent. Most people don't even know that. Wow. That must have something to do with the Khazars of Ukraine, right? They say they're Jews, but they're really not. They're elitist. No wonder why there was so much killing of real Jewish people in the Holocaust. Yeah, the real Jewish people were being killed, and they were being sacrificed on the altar of New World Order. you got to remember, Adolf Hitler had a lot of elite Jews in his cabinet. Just like Zelensky, right? Zelensky, you know what? Let me put up some. I, I ran across this. I thought it was kind of cute. So I'm going to let it play here while we're, while we're talking about Zelensky, right? Um, and let me just make sure the volume's turned off of this here. This is kind of like a little, uh, a little uh, meme, you might say, they put together to make Zelensky uh, about him nervous. But you got to remember, Putin also plays part of that plan. I hate to say it, but he does. Uh, Knowingly or unknowingly, it doesn't matter. The thing is, they're all together, working together. But Zelensky, of course, he is Jewish, and they say, oh, Jews can never be, could never be a part of a neo-Nazi fascist government. Oh, yeah, they can. Oh, yeah, they can. And uh, I'm going to introduce you in just a moment here to a, uh, a, a political scientist from Russia that actually shares that, before I get into the other issues here, uh, Ms. Sazanova, um, and this article right here, Sazanova refuted the West's argument that Nazism is impossible in a Jewish-led country. She states here, in the West, the statement was once again made that in a state whose president is a Jew, meaning the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, uh, Nazism cannot exist in principle. But who came up with the idea that Nazism is connected specifically with the Jews? International lawyer, political scientist Kira Sazanova asked, she recalled that the uh, essence of Nazism is the idea of superiority of one human community over another. The authorities can declare not only ethnic or racial superiority, but also linguistic and religious national. 
All right, dropping down. As for Ukraine, the superiority of Ukraine speakers over Russian speakers is postulated there. In terms of manifestation of this superiority, there is no difference, she believes. Not only that, I've shared with you already. I mean, I have um, a friend of mine. He owns a company over in Ukraine, and he has shared with me it is illegal now. The Ukrainian government made it, made it illegal for you to speak Russian. Yeah. Talk about fascism. You can't speak Russian in the country. I don't think the people of Donbass really care about what they think about that, but that's superiority. That's neo-Nazism. According to Sazanova, it is not only the fact that the authorities allow insults against the quote-unquote damn Miskovites, cat saps, and quilted jackets. That is scary. And not only the sanctioning of parades with portraits of Bandera, which Bandera was nothing but their little fascist uh, uh, man there that they decided to honor after they overthrow Yanukovych. Uh, and not only the sanction of the praise with the portraits of Bandera and cries of glory to Ukraine, glory to heroes, which are rather accompanying the uh, para paraphernalia. The worst thing is, is when they torture, beat, mod, uh, mock, subject to martyrdom, those people who are no different from them. And they experience pleasure, joy, jubilation from this, she writes. Well, you know, I was actually sent sent to me from a good friend of mine over in Israel um, a video he got from CIA, uh, former CIA agent, that shared the crucifixion of a Russian soldier, and you see the guy being nailed to a cross, cross put into uh, the ground, and then they burn the man alive. That was Ukrainian soldiers that did this. Now, was it really Ukrainians or, 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 or maybe somebody else? I mean, the propaganda that I've seen coming out of Ukraine is unbelievable. But this lady here, this political scientist right here, Miss uh, Kira Sazanova, very interesting. Another point that was brought out here, Francis uh, Scar posted this on Twitter, uh, says uh, more mental gymnastics of Verma, now from Pundit, Kira Sazanova. Um, the, author the Russian authorities and armed forces have found themselves in a difficult situation precisely because they have the best intentions because of their desire to place humanitarian above military objectives. Now, I don't know, I guess uh, maybe he's just mocking what she's saying, but the fact is what she says there is very true. The propaganda will not show you that. You, you want to get beyond the propaganda Go listen to Russell Bentley, and if and if you and if you can't, Russell just got a strike on YouTube because he's telling the truth, right? So if you can't listen to what Russell Bentley has to say on YouTube, or, well, you can still see his channel because his channel's not taken down. He's just got a strike on there. But uh, Russell Bentley clearly will tell you what's going on. They put that strike on him because they don't want the truth coming out of Ukraine. And uh, you can always sign up to VK. Uh, let me just see. I'll show you the VK. What is it? VK.com. I, I forget exactly how. Yeah, VK.com. VK.com. Basically, it is the Russian version of Facebook here. And uh, and this one right here, this guy's here is called Putin's Pipe. Very informative articles on there. But Russell Bentley is on there. And he is going to give you the most accurate information coming out of Donbass, uh, the eastern part of Russia. He's an American. He's from Texas originally. And uh, Russell, actually his website as well, I didn't, I didn't know about that, RussellTexasBentley.com. Uh, so let's click on his website there for you. Uh, Russell has really shared a lot of very accurate information. Uh, I've used a lot of his work back in 2015, 2016, 2017, uh, when the Ukrainians were really just massacring the East Ukrainians. I still call them all, they're all Ukrainians, you know, in my opinion, shouldn't be one one superiority over the other. So anyway, I really appreciate Russell Bentley's work there. So, all right, so let's go back. I want, I want to get, get back so I, because you really need to understand this whole issue of what's really going on in uh, Ukraine. Why is this nation being overthrown? And I believe, I know this part of the New World Order agenda. I know that Israel wants to overtake this land. Uh, also, for example, if you go here, uh, this interview that was done here, this is um, uh, Max Blumenthal. Max is a Jewish guy, but like myself, he's willing to tell the crimes that Israel is committing, right? 
And I really appreciate that about Max Blumenthal. This here has only got 10 views, right? Terrible. Israel and Azov Battalion in Ukraine. This should have a million views is what it should have. So I'm going to play a little clip. Let's see. Let me see if I can find the part here. Yeah, because he's, he's going to talk to you about Israel arming Ukraine. Uh, so let's just see here. Um, the Defense Ministry of Israel has confirmed uh, several shipments of arms and tenders for weapon sales to Ukraine, to the Ukrainian military. The Azov Battalion has posted photos of its uh, soldiers your neo -Nazi on its own YouTube channel and social media channels with the Tavor rifle. And the Tavor rifle is one of the most distinctive weapons in the Israeli arsenal. It is the standard issue rifle for Israeli soldiers and you know it was recently used in some of the atrocities committed on the border of Gaza and it, it, re it replaced the Uzi which is another really distinctive Israeli weapon so there's no mistake here this is clearly an Israeli weapon and it reflects uh, what was seen in the Israeli Defense Ministry documents which were turned up by Israeli human rights lawyers and um, were obtained by um, ASA and the Electronic Intifada. And I, basically, the Israeli Defense Ministry has refused to deny uh, shipping weapons to the Azov Battalion. Well, the reason that they have kind of... Anyway, I'll post the link for this video because I want to make sure you guys are able to see this as well. Uh, but uh, Mr. Blumenthal there, I'm very, I really appreciate the fact that he, he's exposing these things. The Azov Battalion in Ukraine using that. Israel is, uh, but, but, but oddly enough, it's funny, right? Israel takes and, and supplies the weapons to them, right? And Israel has brought out the Jewish people out of Ukraine to protect the Jewish people. But then I get an email today from uh, an Israeli journalist who says that they're turning the planes back to Ukraine and Hungary uh, and sending back the, the, the refugees of the war because they're not Jewish. Isn't that interesting? And yet the, uh, I believe it was the uh, the Ukrainian, um, oh gosh, what was it? Uh, one sec, I gotta share this with you. Let me, let, me, let me pull this up, hang on one second. All right, here we go, here's the letter right here. Ukrainian ambassador to Israel, Yevgen Kornakuk, expressed disappointment with the Israeli Interior Ministry decision not to allow Ukrainian refugees to come to Israel from Poland or Hungary. Dozens of Ukrainian citizens have been sent back from Ben-Gurion Airport to countries from which they have arrived in recent days. Thousands of Ukrainians saved Jews in the Holocaust, the ambassador said. This is a humanitarian matter and I ask that they reconsider it. Asking for a guarantee of 10,000 to 20,000 shekels is very difficult. We ask for your help. They do not come to work here. They are fleeing the war. The ambassador also said that his country, Ukraine, had asked Israel for medical assistance and shipment of military equipment and thanked for the decision to transfer humanitarian aid to the country. We have given Israel a specific list of additional medical equipment we need, like antibiotics, and we hope that they will provide that as well. In any case, thank you for what you have done so far, he said. Yeah, so Israel definitely sent in the bullets and the guns and the bombs and everything else to help the neo or the fascist government there to try to overtake uh, the eastern side of Ukraine, right? Well, what do you know? What do you know? But when it comes to Gentile refugees, send them back. That's a shame. That's a shame. Let's find out why. Anyway, the video I did here, I got a message from friends uh, from D.C. recently that were surprised at the accuracy of the information in this particular video, Putin foiled NATO plan to take Donetsk and Luhansk. Because we saw that the, in the information here, yes, NATO was working with the Ukrainian uh, military to overthrow eastern Ukraine, provoke Russia into a war. Now, they were also, we had sent in our military to stop Russia from coming from Kaliningrad. Okay, 
Let me let me just show you all these things here. Remember Kaliningrad? The little the, the Kaliningrad is a, is the Russian province right there on the north side of Poland. We sent in additional troops to make sure that we would stop the Russians from being able to help the Ukrainians from there, and also down here in Moldova, so that the Russians could not come in and help from the southern side. Putin had got wind of this, and so he made the choice to go into Ukraine a day before the actions were to begin by the NATO-backed group there. And then I get word that was amazingly accurate. Why though? Why is this all critical? Okay, those of you that watch our broadcast, like I said, over on Patreon, if you recall, and maybe even in our regular news broadcast, I have spoke about when the world's economy collapse, it will be Egypt will be the first one to go. Egypt, of all places, right? Why Egypt? Well, I didn't know why. And I've been trying to figure that out for a long time. Why do they want Egypt to fall? Well, Egypt falling has a lot to do with Planet X. I know as crazy as that may sound, Planet X has a lot to do with Egypt. All right. Now, if you remember, I shared with you guys a little while back, Herbokulus uh, Ferrata, the, the um, Ferrata is the Chilean astronomer. He's already passed away. He, an official astronomer for Chile, for Chile, and he was the one that had some of the best information about the coming of what we call Planet X or Planet Nine and the effects it's going to have on the Earth here. Okay, unbelievable consequences to the Earth. He talked about it having an elliptical orbit, uh, travels between the sun and uh, you know and, and some other distant place in the galaxy there. Um, and this was on a documentary done in Chile, and uh, and he speaks about this planet having the elliptical orbit, three different speeds. At one point, it's like I think it's one third the speed of light. This thing will be moving. I mean, this is unbelievable, the speeds of it. But he also goes into how dangerous this will be, not only for the Earth, the global impacts that it's going to have here, uh, but also he seems to indicate it would even affect the human genome. Okay? And it goes between us and a dead sun, right? Now, 92 kilometers a second, he says, per second. As an, and he, then he says it has another speed. All right, watch what he says here. Which is more terrifying, isn't it? It has three speeds. Munzo Ferrata confirms that this planet travels at three speeds. One around the black sun at 92 kilometers a second, another close to our sun at 76 kilometers a second. There's going to be a third speed. Watch what he says here. And third, full speed, the full speed, it keeps for half the orbit at 300 kilometers a second. All right. What is 300 kilometers a second? You're going to see here. Watch, watch, watch what he says here. I, I got it on side. He's speaking in Spanish. That is one thousandth of the speed of light. Sorry, I said one third a minute ago. Forgive me for that. One thousandth of the speed of light. It is very fast. Okay. Now, let me see. One of the party says here. Let me just see where it's at here. Soon events take place that will allow Herbokulus to be seen with the naked eye. They're going to say it's going to be Mars at first is what he says here. This body will not go unnoticed. Everyone will see. There will be a lot of confusion, more than confusion, he says. The, the announcer said that. And they will give many interpretations about it. Many. Astronomers will say that they will see, see as Mars or any other planet. But in reality, it is Herbokulus. Her, Herculus. What consequences will it bring to our planet? He says, the most terrifying. And then everyone holds up as they can. 
Munzo Ferrata predicts three major earthquakes. I've calculated three triangular spots. Won't go into all that there. The point is, from the intel that I've shared with you guys already, this planet enters our solar system in September. By the end of the year, it will affect the planets in our solar system. Uh, this planet is similar to Earth, but much larger than Earth. It will have devastating effects on the Earth, devastating effects on China and their agricultural abilities. Keep that in mind. Agricultural abilities of, of China will be devastated. Uh, it is also, this planet, when it comes through, it is it has got an inhabitant of some form of a reptilian species on this planet. And according to our own government officials that work with these entities, these, these, these I call them fallen angels, but reptilians. Um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. Think about it. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Do you know that they considered the Khazarians of Ukraine back in old, and I will say ancient times, they considered them the serpent people. Imagine that one. That's interesting, isn't it? No wonder why Jesus said about the Pharisees, you are seed of vipers, children of vipers. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. Anyway, uh, it doesn't make all Jewish people like that. That was the Pharisees that he was speaking to there. You know, but what is going on then? Right? So, uh, with this coming of this planet, one of the things that I've shared over on Patreon before is that our government knows that inside the Sphinx, inside the Sphinx, there is a secret library that is there. Now, I don't know much about the young boy. They call him the Indigo Child and, and the claims that he was reincarnated, lived on Mars, stuff like that. I'm not here for that debate there. I mainly was looking for uh, something that would kind of give validity to what I'm going to tell you about here. Um, in some of the meetings I've been in, I've been told about this library in the Sphinx. I've shared that on Patreon, how that in that library, it was put there by fallen angels. And that library contains information that is critical for the survivability of what's coming. And our government has been wanting to get a hold of that information. In fact, even the getting the body of Nimrod, according to documents that are considered classified, they know that Nimrod has the ability to read those documents, and that's why it was crucial for them to get his body and to try to put a life back in his body. I know that from what I've been told that the Saudis were the ones that funded all this. They funded the war and everything against Iraq in order to get the body of Nimrod. This whole tri-state region, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Israel, is part of that New World Order tri-state region there, uh, has a lot to do too with bringing Nimrod back and trying to resurrect him so that he can interpret and and of course they say that he's the only one that knows how to get into this library but the big problem has been for our own country is getting control of Egypt so that we would have access because the Egyptians are not going to allow you just to go in there and try to get inside any kind of library period they're just not going to do it and that's what I've been told so then I begin to put things together and I realize this whole thing with Ukraine then. What is it? I've been told by an amazing economist, a good friend of mine, that Egypt would be the first to fall economically. That was confirmed by some people I know in DC that yes, they will, and that the motions had already been set in place for their demise. Now I was told this last year, going back maybe four, five, six months ago, something like that, you guys might remember, all right? Why then would they want the economy of Egypt to collapse? Well, it began to make sense after this whole thing with Ukraine. If you cause the economy to collapse in Egypt, pandemonium, chaos, then you can overthrow the nation, then you can take control of the country. All right, go back then and think for a moment here, right? Remember Obama. Let me see if I can find that here. All right, 10 years ago, ten, uh, Tunisia, um, this man right here set himself on fire and he ends up dying, but it's what they call, they say caused the Arab Spring. Those of you that have watched our channel long enough know that I give you the intel on this. They were using skull to brain technology and caused that man to set himself on fire. 
in order to get this Arab Spring uprising to take place. This was done by none other than the Obama administration and Biden, the then vice president, because they wanted to overthrow this whole region up in that area so that eventually they could get control of Egypt, right? Now, let me just see if I can find here. Watch what Obama has to say here, a little bit of what he says here on this too. It's been less than two years since a vendor in Tunisia set himself on fire to protest the oppressive corruption in his country. Hang on one second, because I know the audio is very, very low. We're, we're at full audio. I apologize for this. It sparked what became known as the Arab Spring. And since then, the world has been captivated by the transformation that's taken place. And the United States, the United States has supported the forces of change. All right. The main thing is, he talks in there about the man that set himself on fire and that and it launched the Arab Spring, and he says the United States has supported that change. Sure they did. Why? They need to get control of Egypt because of the Sphinx. So it didn't fully work. Not like Libya where we kill Muammar Gaddafi, overthrow that nation, and take over all of that as well, part of that New World Order agenda. But they still need Egypt to collapse so they can get a hold of this information in there. So... When I was told that the steps were being taken to cause that collapse of the Egyptian economy, I wasn't given the information of what those steps were. But later I was given information about how that Biden's administration, currently now, now that he's not vice, now he's president, not vice president, that they were provoking the Ukrainian military to go and take Donetsk and Luhansk region. Remember that. I, I brought that video out, I don't know what, back in, uh, was it January? No, that was back in December, I guess. I, something, something like last year, something like that. And I told you then, I said the Russians will back away and it, it'll calm down to start with. But it's not going to end. It'll, it'll, it'll end up reflaring up. I didn't know it'd reflare up at the time. But I knew that Biden was trying to provoke a war with Russia. Why did they want to provoke a war with Russia? Because if they provoke a war with Russia, Russia will come in, and then what would it do? Ukraine is not only a fifth largest producer of wheat, but now strategic nations in the Middle East, in this case here, Egypt, who gets 90% of its, of its bread and sunflower oil from Ukraine and Russia, most of it coming from Ukraine. So as this article here comes out, the Russian-Ukraine war ha has turned Egypt's food crisis into an existential threat to the economy. With the outbreak of the Russian-Ukraine war on February 24, 2002, Egypt's food security crisis now poses an existential threat to its economy. The fragile state of Egypt's food security stems from agricultural sectors' inability to produce enough cereal grains, especially wheat, oil seeds, to meet even half of the country's domestic demand. Cairo was already facing down food inflation levels not seen since the Arab Spring civil unrest a decade earlier that toppled the government of former President Hosni Mubarak. Notice they bring you back even to that, the Arab Spring. The Russian-Ukraine war uh, catapulted prices to an unst un uh, unsustainable levels for Egypt, increased the price of wheat by an additional 44% of sunflower oil by 32% virtually overnight. Even more troublesome, the war also threatens Egypt's physical supply itself, since 85% of its wheat comes from Russia and Ukraine, as does 73% of its sunflower oil. What do you know? Arab Spring didn't work. Burning the guy don't work. So what they're going to do now, they decided a new plan. What are they going to do? They're going to cut out Ukraine, stop that wheat supply from going over there. And what's interesting, I was just, I remember being in a meeting not too long ago, and they said that Trump was meeting with uh, President, former President Trump met with some of the generals uh, in our military and they were asking, how do we deal with Russia over this Ukraine? Before we ended up having Russia going to Ukraine. And Trump says, there's nothing you can do. We have no bargaining chips. 
And the very thing that was pointed out to me is that Ukraine used to ship its food products, produce, to Russia. But they no longer did. Which made me wonder what nations was Ukrainians' uh, foods going being sold to. Well, guess what? Lebanon, Egypt, uh, Indonesia, but especially Lebanon and Egypt and those countries there in the Middle East. Wow. So easy for the United States and Israel to topple the Arab nations they want to topple by cutting off their, their, their food supply. And then taking control of that country where they control what they do with it later. And at the same time, because Planet X is coming and they do need to get control of the Sphinx and they do need to get that artifact out of there, it'll give them the ability to cause such unrest in the country that, wow, we got to send in forces now to deal with Egypt because Egypt's gone haywire. And then I was told that something's going to happen in the Middle East that could spark global World War III. You can't help but realize that the pieces of the puzzle are all coming together right before our eyes. Here it is. Russia, Ukraine export 29% of the world's wheat. The crisis has sent food prices to a 13-year high. And then they show you all those different articles and stuff about it right there on Twitter. Okay, so this is the real reason behind that war. They need to get, they wanted to control who's going to get this food supply. Even though Russia is there to liberate the Eastern, the Russian uh, speaking Ukrainians. And, but at the same time, do they even realize they were provoked to war in order to create this, this chaos so that they could take control of making sure no exports are going over to Egypt, cause the humanitarian crisis, cause the whole globe. And, and, that's, and it doesn't end just with Ukraine and, and uh, Egypt. That'll also, it will, it will bring about the justification when Russia decides, okay, the, the war is going to end up spreading to Romania and Poland because Russia knows that the United States NATO allies, they were doing this. They already have the intel. So that is, it's going to end up spreading to those two countries, not to mention we're using, uh, you know, independent contractors, black op groups to be able to take down Russian planes and stuff inside of Ukraine. So it doesn't look like it's the United States. So somewhere along the way, Russia is going to end up striking the mainland United States. Uh, and when that happens, China has already agreed that they would help Russia to do an invasion on this country. China needs that as well. So not only do they, not only does Israel and the United States want the collapse of uh, uh, the collapse of Egypt, so they can get a hold of the Sphinx to get that information out of there, but China wants the collapse of the United States so that China can take a hold of the lands here in the United States in order to be able to have agricultural way to support their own people. And again, because of why they know this rogue planet is coming through. They're going to call it Planet Nine is where they're going to disclose it, things like that. But they're needing it as well because they won't have any agricultural system whatsoever. This is what this whole war is all about. And sadly, nobody is telling nobody the truth about what's coming. So after all, Planet X is right around the corner, friends. And we are in a very, very serious trouble. He says, the large gravitational field that brings this new star, which hasn't penetrated for 13,000, he says 13,000 years. And that 13,000 years ago were the times of the lost Atlanteans. This is Ferrara speaking. He says, has resonance of effects that produce reflections and weaknesses. will cause a big change. This big change is since 1940, isn't it, that you have studied, oh, he just goes into that. Uh, oh, gosh. You know, he said if he lived long enough, he could actually predict the coming. He, he said it's very difficult because of the changes, and I've learned that a lot myself. 
Anyway, this uh, one other thing I want to share with you real quick. The Chinese spoke about Putin's spare Trump card, which caused panic in the West. The decision of the president of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, to bring the deterrence forces to special mode of combat alert indicates that Moscow is serious about implementing its plans for Ukraine. Chinese military expert Song Zongping explained in an interview with uh, Haneke uh, Shiba that Russia decided to put its nuclear forces on alert for a reason. Such measures were implemented not as a response to Western sanctions, but as a clear signal from the United States and the EU that countries should not interfere in Moscow's uh, special operation in Ukraine. This means that all types of missiles, weapons will be on standby mode. Targets have been identified and relevant data has been uploaded. If an order is received, aiming is carried out for a nuclear strike, the expert explained. Uh, Zhang Ping said that such decision by Vladimir Putin is actually his backup trump card in case possible provocations by the West. Uh, Moscow says it is determined to respond harshly to any attempts by the U.S. and the EU to influence the course of the special operation that's taking place in Ukraine. That's something I want to make sure you were aware of as well. Uh, and I believe that will wrap it up for now. One thing, let me really, really encourage you on, okay? EMP Shield. And I wish I had more time to really go into this. With all this issue of war, talk of war, things like that, um, I can't encourage you more to get an EMP shield uh, for whether it be your vehicle, your home, uh, they have European models, etc. No, ma no matter which one you were to get to help you out with that, when you go to purchase an EMP shield, uh, you just once you get to the cart for checking out, doesn't matter how many you get, what you do, if you apply the our our, our code INL50 and you apply that, the company is going to give you a fifty dollar discount. Uh, it also helps us because they do uh, they do donate to us for each one that is sold. So it is a way to help support the work we do here. Uh, and if, of course, if you've already got one and you still want to support the work that we do here, uh, we certainly appreciate your help as well. IsraeliNewsLive.org, Danun Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. And by the way, I will be responding uh, again uh, hopefully this weekend where I'll mail out more thank you letters for people that have been kind enough to help us uh, and keeping this ministry going. I know there's a lot on people's hearts that are going on right now. And uh, and we do have a tremendous burden that we're facing as well. So we appreciate you and we thank you for your support. And like I said, even your purchase of these uh, EMP shows. We know it's not just that it helps us, but it, it will, I believe it's like buying some form of insurance that might help protect you or get your loved ones home. You put it on your car. If we are hit with an EMP strike, uh, that's one of the choice things that a foreign nation would do to cripple our country is an EMP strike. That's why I actually support this product and I don't support products because I'm not into products, but this one I do. And I feel like, and, and by the way, if I haven't already said it to you, Worst case scenario, doesn't mean it's going to happen then, but worst case scenario, the generals uh, uh, at the Joint Chiefs do anticipate that we could end up in war in our own nation here in the United States as early as April of this year. Uh, I don't say that that's going to happen. I pray that it doesn't. But as we see, the situation is not settling down. I don't see it settling down because in all cases, whether it be China, whether it be the U.S., Israel, wanting to get a hold of Egypt, uh, the artifacts that are in that Sphinx, they will go to whatever links. And believe me, they will go to those links. We went to war with Iraq because we wanted the body of Nimrod and the technology that was in his tomb. And that's what gave CERN the ability to go into multi-dimensions. So they're willing to go to war over those types of things. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast here in the family with Israeli News Live. Good day.